NATO has to be able to respond uh, to uh, any threat from any direction, uh, north, south, east, west. Therefore, we also, of course, have to exercise uh, in the north. Uh, the importance of this exercise is that it shows that we can bring 29 allies together with land forces, uh, naval forces, uh, air forces, uh, cyber and many other capabilities, and, uh, and that they can operate together. And that sends a strong message of NATO unity and uh, our resolve and, uh, and the capability of defending each other. This exercise is very much about military mobility. We have moved forces across the whole alliance, uh, all the way from the west coast of the United States uh, to uh, uh, Norway, and also uh, as far southeast as from uh, Izmir, Turkey, all the way up here. But uh, NATO has to be able to move uh, uh, heavy equipment, uh, supplies, uh, ten uh, thousands of soldiers uh, uh, to be able to reinforce uh, any ally if needed. And the reason we do that is not to provoke a conflict, but it is to prevent the conflict. Because as long as any potential adversary know that NATO is there to defend all allies and that an attack on one ally will trigger a response from the whole alliance, then uh, we prevent conflict, uh, and that's the main task of, of NATO, is to preserve the peace and to prevent uh, uh, conflict. This exercise uh, was planned even before that, so this is a long time planned uh, uh, exercise. Uh, NATO has always uh, exercised. That's an important part of NATO. We have uh, uh, we conduct uh, small exercises, big exercises, tabletop exercises, live exercises. We have uh, uh, always had many exercises because we have to uh, make sure that we uh, always are able to operate together under very different circumstances, different climate, uh, north, south, uh, uh, and, uh, and in different uh, uh, environments. So that's the reason why we have always exercised and we will continue to do so. This exercise shows that we have uh, a strong transatlantic unity in NATO, that Europe and North America stand uh, together. Uh, the US has uh, uh, 20,000 troops uh, in this exercise, Canada is part of the exercise. Uh, we have the US uh, aircraft carrier uh, uh, group, uh, uh, strike group here in, in, in this exercise now. Uh, so this shows the strength of NATO that uh, North America and uh, Europe uh, work together. No, we conduct this exercise as uh, uh, planned uh, and we are uh, uh, transparent about what we do. We have briefed Russia on the exercise in the NATO-Russia Council. We have invited uh, uh, many observers to participate uh, and to observe the exercise. Russia will observe the exercise. They can, they can speak to the soldiers, they can overfly the exercise and, and, and they will be briefed on the scenario. So Russia will observe the exercise because we have nothing to hide. We are open and transparent when it comes to our uh, exercises. The, we, this exercise is not directed against any specific country. Uh, uh, the purpose is to make sure that NATO continues to be able uh, to deliver deterrence uh, to prevent uh, con conflict. Well, NATO has always been north. Uh, I mean, expanding north. Uh, no, I will say that first of all, NATO has always been north because uh, Iceland and Norway are among the founding members, uh, together also with North America and Canada, mm -hmm. which is north. Um, uh, uh, second, uh, Finland and Sweden, they are uh, close partners of NATO. They have been close partners of NATO for a long time. Uh, they participate in NATO exercises, in NATO missions and operations, for instance in Afghanistan, but also in Kosovo and other places. Uh, and uh, and uh, we appreciate very much the close partnership between uh, Finland and Sweden, uh, close partners of NATO. They're not members, and we respect, of course, the decision by those uh, countries to stay outside NATO, but uh, to be uh, close uh, partners of NATO. Mr. Sotolberg, thank you very much for your interview, yeah. for your interviews, yeah. and good luck for the exercise.